Alex here. I'm just going to hijack the video for a moment to ask you all a couple of favours. Firstly, a thousand subscribers is a huge milestone for any channel, and that's what I'm working towards at the moment. But it's really tough at the beginning, and so I need all of your help. If you like the channel, please subscribe, and also please get others who you think may like it to check it out too. Secondly, you may have heard from other video content that YouTube has recently changed something in the background, which is really hurting small creators like myself to get started. So if you do subscribe, please click the notification bell and be sure to select all under the bell icon, because this seems to be one of the things that YouTube has altered, meaning subscribers are not getting notifications of new content. I know I haven't seen some new notifications from videos from the channels that I follow. Anyway, that's everything. I'll let you get back to it, and I hope you enjoy the video that follows and have great modelling moments of your own. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you the top weathering materials for your plastic scale modelling. Stay till the end of the video though, because I've got a couple of bonus items thrown in there as well. Just like my top 10 detailing items video, which you can find here if you've not seen it yet, I'm going to tell you what I personally use and recommend in each of the categories in the video and giving you links to those products below, though they or equivalent products will be available elsewhere in your country, I'm sure. So with that aside, let's get into it, shall we? Dry brushing is one of the oldest and most easily applied weathering techniques used in our hobby. And though it's not difficult to do, it can take a bit of time to develop your technique so that it's easy and quick to do and you can achieve the effect you're looking for. It's extremely versatile and you can create a multitude of different effects, but essentially it boils down to using a small amount of paint on a brush, wiping almost all of it off, hence the dry part of the name, and then rubbing that over the part you're looking to detail. The small amount of paint on the brush is only applied to the highest detail that catches on your brush, which creates a false sense of depth. That's the basic premise, though you can do other things with it as you learn to use it more. The main thing to know that all you need is a brush and some paint. If you've got older, thicker paint, that's really ideal, and it tends to be lighter paint, because that tends to be what happens on the edges as you get wear, and so that becomes highlighted. Small makeup brushes do tend to be the best, and also cheapest, you don't need specialised brushes to do this. And I found these e.l.f. contour brushes are probably the, some of the best ones that I've used. One of the most cost effective and widely applicable of weathering materials, regardless of subject, are those of oil and enamel washes. Uh, and essentially, they're pigment suspended in a, a mineral spirit based solvent. This allows them to flow very easily and get into all the little places where shadow and dirt and grime would normally accumulate. Now, there are a number of pre made washes available, but it's far cheaper to buy oil paints and odorless thinner and make your own. You'll need them anyway and I'll cover this in depth in a future video. So here you can see the Tamiya bottles actually come with their own little brush. And you can see as I'm putting it in here, how it's naturally flowing around and accumulating next to all of those little crevices where you've got raised detail and lower detail. And then I can just go back in with a simple cotton bud and just take off any excess. So what you don't want is it to kind of pool in the large open areas. And this means that you then create a depth of contrast between the open areas and where you have those seams and internal detail like rivets and small lines. Acrylic washes tend to be used in miniature painting more than scale modeling, but they have their place here too. The main difference between acrylic washes and oil or enamel washes are the solvents used. Obviously water in the case of acrylic and mineral spirits for oils and enamels. This essentially manifests in how they flow on your model and interact with your existing paint finishes. Acrylics have the advantage of being water-based and non-toxic, but they tend to flow less easily and are harder to remove. Oils and enamels flow very well, and they're easy to remove from an acrylic finish, but they can absorb into some finishes, some especially matte finishes, and the solvents used are, of course, hazardous. At the end of the day, acrylic washes have their place, and they're another tool in the toolbox. Very popular in the miniature hobby world, 
Contrast and speed paints are essentially just very heavily pigmented washes that can be used as both a top coat and a shading wash all in one. They have the advantage of adding a lot of visual texture to a base surface, creating highlights, midtones, and shades in a single application, and they should have an immediate and obvious application to scale hobby, but I haven't really seen many scale modelers using them in earnest yet. They do allow a modeler to essentially skip a wash step on things like tank tracks, for example, and go directly then to other weathering. Weathering pigments are the yin to washes yang. Whereas oil washes tend to be good at getting in recesses and crevices or used for streaks of oil or dirt, pigments are usually best for representing surface dirt, smoke staining, dust and those sort of effects. They can also be used for streaks, but the combination of dry brushing, washes and weathering powders is extremely powerful. If you want to know how to create your own weathering pigments for next to nothing, check out my video shown here now. Graphite powder sounds fancy, but everyone has some in their home, usually in the form of pencils. The centre of a pencil is made from graphite, and you can create graphite powder by scraping a pencil with a knife or a scalpel blade. I've got some here, you can also buy it in quantity, but generally that from a pencil is fine. So what do you use it for? Well, over a base coat of dark grey or black, graphite creates a very realistic gunmetal colour with a soft scale sheen. Used in its native pencil form, it's a really handy way of applying scratches to usually armoured fighting vehicles. Just try to use a softer pencil, as you don't want to scratch the paint off your finish and reveal bare plastic with the tool that you're using to weather it with. Chipping medium is a water soluble finish that you coat onto your model, paint over and can then use a water containing brush to dissolve that medium, resulting in the ability to remove or chip the top finish that's applied above it. This is really effective in creating worn and rusty finishes on old cars or armor fighting vehicles or bare shiny aluminium under an aircraft panel for instance. There are various mediums available though there are also homemade alternatives such as hairspray which were used long before bespoke products were available as well. Small marker pens in various media are available from both model manufacturers, Tamiya again is in on this, companies like Gunsangyo, aftermarket hobby companies like AK Interactive, MIG and also art stores. Having very fine tips, they allow you to put small, discrete marks on a model representing chips or other effects in a very controllable way. Some use media like oils, which then can be further manipulated when on the model, giving you another level of control about how you're applying an effect. And today they're available in a, a large number of colours and different types of finish, giving you a large range of options. We're very lucky in this current modelling era of having a lot of specialised paints available to us now. From the likes of Citadel, this is uh, some basing material type of paint. Now you can also use it for accumulated dirt on tank tracks for instance. Things like this Typhus Corrosion, used for really nasty corrosion on metals. This is Vallejo Smoke, yeah, I'll give you an idea of what that is. Secret Weapon produced a, a load of these, they're no longer in production, but if you can find these, they're great to pick up for oil and engine dirt, that kind of stuff. A lot of other manufacturers produce specialised paints as well. The long and short of it is that now there are a huge host of these available, and you can use these in your modelling according to your style and what you're used to as you gain that experience. The last thing I'm going to mention today is actually the first thing that I apply on a model and that is airbrush shading. Now an airbrush can be used to either do pre or post shading. Here I'm showing you on this tank destroyer how I've used it to create a lighter surface in the middle of the panels, fading to a darker surface towards the edges. For AFEs this is usually to show the sun bleaching uh, a panel and it can be the same on aircraft. But essentially it's building up variation in tone with the airbrush to create the effect that you want. Now the first bonus I have for you here isn't really a weathering material itself, it is actually rust. 
and rust created by using iron filings or iron powder. You can even use steel wool broken up and I'll show you actually how to do this um, in a later video. But essentially nothing looks like rust more than rust itself. So actually creating rust that you can then apply to your models, usually in larger scales or for dioramas, can be a very effective way of getting that look on your model. And the last bonus I have here for you are basing materials. Basing materials, either just standard basing materials or more specialized ones, can be used either to show accumulated dirt or for special effects, like for instance, snow. Snow is difficult to represent other than in a sort of fine powder, and you can use things like bicarbonate of soda, but it's quite reactive. So there are specialized basing materials. This one's just a, a GW one, but there are others available. Uh, and these can add particular finishes in particular circumstances. So to summarize our weathering materials, first off we have dry brushing. Cheap to do, but takes a little while to develop your technique. Oil or enamel washes. Very cost effective, best if you make your own. Acrylic washes. Far less toxic than oil or enamel washes, but have their own different properties. Contrast and speed paints. Not widely used in our hobby at the moment, but a lot of potential. Weathering powders. Really powerful in combination with washes and dry brushing. Graphite powder or pencils. Fairly specialized, but create very effective results. Chipping medium. Great for creating heavy weathering on AFVs or aircraft. Pens. Really good for small details, chips, color abrasions, whatever. Specialized paints. There are a whole host available. What you use is very much up to you. And finally, airbrush pre or post shading. A really powerful tool, does require an airbrush, and usually the first point of call when you're going into actually finishing a model. And then those two last bonuses. One, actual rust for rust, and then basing materials for those specialized finishes. So I hope you enjoyed today's video on the top 10 weathering items to use in your models. What I'm going to be doing in my next video is revisiting that Tamiya FRS1 Sea Harrier that I recommended as your first kit build and going back and seeing how we can improve it using some of the tools and techniques that I've talked about over this past three top 10 videos and seeing what kind of results we get out at the end of that. So I hope you join me for that. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Also, be sure to sign up to my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages, because I'll be posting updates there as I go from now on, just to show you little highlights of what I'm doing along the week in advance of releasing videos. That's all for this installment of Man's Model Moments. Please like, subscribe, and share this video if you enjoyed it. It's the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like it. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.